On April 2nd, 2017, a crowd of 74,434 saw Coventry City win their first trophy since the 1987 FA Cup. Easily still to this day, one of the best days of my life in general. Seeing Coventry City win a trophy at Wembley was absolutely priceless. Yet despite this, a couple of weeks later, Coventry City were relegated to the fourth division of English football. As much as the EFL trophy win was a catalyst for further things to come under Mark Robbins. At the time, a huge reason why we did win the trophy was because no one else actually wanted to win it. And well, that is what brings me here tonight to Brisbane Road, home of League One side Leighton Orient, as they face Arsenal's under-21s in EFL Trophy action. Now, obviously, the main reason I am here, I'm not going to beat around the bush, is to do the ground. After finishing League One tonight, I'll only have three grounds left of the EFL 92. One of them actually being Arsenal, along with Crystal Palace and Bromley. So on the train down here, I looked on social media to see how excited the fans were ahead of tonight's match. And let's just say they're not. The majority of the posts that Leighton Orient put out were all just bombarded with hashtag B team boycott. You might be asking why are the B teams so bad for these football league teams? You're seeing young players from academies at the bigger teams playing against League One, League Two sides. It would be a good test, right? Well, that's not entirely true. The B teams have never made it really far in this competition as of yet. The biggest problem was at the time, it changed from a 48 team knockout tournament where if you didn't care, just get knocked out in the first round, get rid of it, to a group stage, which would see you, two of the Football League teams joined by a Premier League two side, which was basically the equivalent of a Premier League sides under 21s team. Why? Well, you guessed it money the excuse at the time for this from the premier league and the football league was they wanted to give these young players experience of playing first team football the tournament has seen the likes of bakayo saka eddie and ketia emil smith rowe declan rice peter peter crouch as well playing this competition for an under 21 team tickets tonight started at 10 pounds for an adult five pounds concession one pound for a child only one stand is open there's not much demand for tickets so clearly this tournament is dead and buried in the water for these efl sides personally even for me as someone that has seen their team Team win this tournament I do not care about it tonight I'm hoping to at least change my perception or someone watching's perception on this tournament Orient hosting Arsenal it would be a London derby if it was the first team but really this is just a chance for local Arsenal fans to come and watch the under 21s more than Orient fans getting to watch their team in a cup competition anyway I think I've spent enough time waffling let's get inside Brisbane Road and watch some football <laughs> So I'm now inside Brisbane Road. I'm going to be honest, it's a lovely League One stadium, but that is not what has caught my eye here. Norian may have the best food at football. Double pie, double mash. I love pie and mash. And an orange Luke save. For anyone that knows me, that is unbelievable cuisine. So as I have a break of my pie and mash, because this isn't a food reviewing channel, one thing I find mental about this ground is these flats overlook the pitch. Same with them there and them there. I mean, that is literally someone's kitchen. I'm sorry if you're watching this and this is your kitchen and you, you know, I'm filming you. Regardless, I am a massive fan of Brisbane Road. I actually think it's one of my favorites in League One. Approximately 20 minutes now from kickoff. The ground is starting to fill up here and there. Notice there's a couple of Copenhagen shirts, people with Great Britain bags. I guess this is one positive that you would have been a London club. The tourists, oh look, there's a local football game on. Arsenal, I guess I'm not the only day tripper here after all. So then just like that, it is kickoff time here at Brisbane Road. Electric, this atmosphere. So the game has kicked off. It looks like the locals in these flats are not bothered about tonight's game. There is actually quite a few people who live in this one that have decided to watch tonight's EFL trophy game. And moments later, Orion are oh, 1 0 down. If I'm honest, it was just a goalkeeper mistake. He's come out, he's went to clear it, it's landed at the feet of an Arsenal player, and he's shot from around about there, and it's ended up in the back of the net. So it's been about 20 minutes since the goal. Not heard a chant yet. That's one concern. I mean, the most interesting thing that's happened since the goal is me knocking on Lucas Aid over. I'm not knocking Leighton Orion or their fans, by the way. I think it's just the interest in this cup. I mean, not half of the stadium is empty. Yeah, then 1 1, header at the far post, crossed in. One concern though, not most of these like, didn't even stand up when they're running. Dan Aggie as well, former Coventry City player. 
and I'd love to say that the atmosphere has picked up but it's like watching a game during lockdown you can hear the players like when they're coming up near you shouting and instructing each other We get a round of applause, 43 minutes in. First chant of the game. I mean, in my head, I had a bit of a narrative that it'd be empty, but the crowd here is actually pretty decent numbers wise. We did take over 40 minutes to hear a chant, and that's not me slagging off late and or in. I think the ground's great, the food's excellent. I just don't think people care enough about this competition. It's just if you've not nothing to do on a Tuesday night, you're here. People think that the Carabao Cup is a Mickey Mouse trophy. That Cup, at least there's some competitive edge to it. When Orient beat Millwall at the Den 1 0, their fans were absolutely buzzing with the result. If Orient win tonight, I don't think most Orient fans will even know. Anyhow, another 45 minutes of entertainment about to go underway. My big observation though is these two right here. Surely they're not getting the best of views of this game. From what I've seen so far, they were having their best of time at half time when there was no football going on and they got to dance to the music. But since the football's come back on, they've looked quite bored to be honest. The uh, mascots now are getting some pictures local celebrity over here we go down and when i went to lincoln a couple of weeks ago i noticed that every league one team i've got a long thrower and here is laying orients oh. for long throw standards it's maybe a 5.5 5, 6 out of 10 it's not the best of long throws in this league There's two ones to Arsenal and these mascots, they don't care. They're still posing for photos. It's another one of them where the goalkeepers come way too hard. It's a goalkeeper mistake really. He's just hit it from outside the box. Just went into the back of the net. Right then, big man, James with his long throw. Let's see if this one goes as far as the other. I think some of the game, but the one thing I remember this game for more than anything is the mascots. That's been the entertainment, or more so the female one. She's been dancing, even trying to chat with the photographers. Meanwhile, the male one has just stood there looking bored. Looking really, really bored. I think it does say it all though. We've got 20 minutes left to go in this game and there's already people leaving. They can't exactly use the excuse for, you know, I've got to get out to beat the rush. Well, that's the attendance, 2,219. You've got to remember as well, a lot of people here tonight will be here to support Arsenal, so that does boost the crowd a little bit. I think it just proves that the interest for this tournament is very minimal. Well, there's late drama. This is probably the biggest thing that's happened all game. 89 minutes in, Leighton Orient awarded a penalty. And he's missed. Over the bar. Well, that was a very poor penalty. Heartbreak in the end for Leighton Orient. But these fans, I don't even think they're bothered. Half of them laughed. And just like that, they're all heading to the exits. I think from watching this game, Orient have been the better team, but it does show that these under-21s teams can compete with League 1, League 2 sides. Well, that signature long throw. Probably his best of the night. And Orient on the attack again. Some more late drama. The crowd are finally getting into it now. Oh, Probably the last chance of the game for Orient. And there you go then. There's a the full-time whistle. Leighton Orient 1, Arsenal under 21s 2. I'll speak to you on the train. Well, I said I'd see you on the train and uh, that was not even a bad game of football. I came into the video with a bit of a narrative today where I was looking mainly for the negatives. But this tournament, I know I'm going to be in the minority, but I think it's actually all right. I feel like I did get my money's worth, £10 a ticket, an end-to-end -end game of football, some good enjoyment. I've had a lot worse Tuesday nights, I'll tell you that.